22 to 29. I don't really know whether the disciples consider themselves funny people or not. The first time I stood up to do a sermon with a prepared joke, Kaz helpfully said to me afterwards, you're a funny person, but not when you prepare to do jokes, you're not. So um, maybe they fall in the same camp as me, I don't know. But you get glimpses of the humor in the writing of the Gospels. And it seems to me that at the beginning of this passage, we have one of those. Judas, not Iscariot. Now imagine, in the days before the stories about Jesus were written down, they were handed around through oral tradition. People couldn't jump on Google and find images of someone or what they'd done. You'd have a group of new Christians gathering together the first Christians in their city or their region, excited because an apostle, someone who walked with Christ, was coming to talk to them. He stands up, as sadly it was always a he in those days, stands up and says, praise God, it is good to be with you today. My name is Judas. Silence. Any questions? I've got a few questions, actually, uh, for you. And you can imagine it developing fairly quickly that his opening line soon became, it's great to be with you today, I'm Judas, not Iscariot. And so you can imagine that when John sits down to write this, he does it with slightly tongue-in-cheek. Judas, not Iscariot, or Saint Jude, as he came to be known, is one of those disciples that we know very little about. In fact, he's known as the patron saint of lost causes, which is, you know, when you're a patron saint of something, that's surely somewhere uh, down the bottom of the rank. He has one line, one line in the whole of the Gospels, and he says it in our reading today. Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? And in that one line, St. Jude conjures up the question that we as Christians have been asking since the beginning of Christianity. Lord, why us? Why us with our strengths and our weaknesses, our successes and our failures? Why us with our doubts and our confusion? Why on earth haven't you, didn't you just show yourself to the whole world or come at a time when social media was really prevalent? You could have racked up a billion followers, I bet, straight away. Why did you choose to work through us as humans who get things wrong and are flawed and make mistakes? When everyone stood up a moment ago and we looked around, I hope you had that sense that being church in this place is not just about those of us who lead at the front, but is about the contribution that all of us make in our service, in our prayers, in our fellowship, in our giving. That we are church together because God has called each of us to this place at this time to be a community of Christians together. In the midst of our failings, our doubts, our mistakes, our strengths, our joys, whether we're feeling holy, whether we're feeling like we failed, whether we feel like our prayer life is the strongest it's ever been, or we feel like we're hanging on by a thread. God has called each of us to be church in this place at this time. And we are together the great gift that God leaves the world. Jesus spends most of his ministry building church, being with a community of disciples and helping them to understand what it means to be community together with Christ at the center. I've expressed my thanks to everyone already who gives, who supports our life together here at St. Mary's. And you know, in the last year, we've said farewell to some dear members of St. Mary's. Liz Salmon, who passed away at the beginning, who died at the beginning of last year. Barbara Quantrill at the beginning of this year. And of course, Kathleen Reed, whose funeral is tomorrow. We also said farewell to Caroline Shuttleworth, who, shared, who served as interim minister here for five years. I'm so grateful for their legacies and their work in our midst and their spiritual legacy to each of us here and now. This should be a place when we gather together as God's family where we can look around and we can rejoice. We can rejoice that in the mystery of God, God chooses to work through us.
not because we are perfect, indeed, far from it, but because we are seeking, as sisters and brothers of Christ together, to learn more and more each day what it means to be a faithful community, Christ-centered and following where the Spirit leads. It should, I hope, give us confidence in the work of God in our midst, not just through the fantastic heritage and story of this church, but with expectant hope of what God is doing and will be doing in our midst. In the last five years, as a church, this church has adopted a language of renewal, that language of the heart of Islington. And for the last five years, that focus has been about renewal of our church buildings. Very grateful to Anthea Nicholson for all her work, which I know was, has been for longer and far more than she would have anticipated at the beginning. But you only have to look around at the church building today, go into the neighborhood center, look at the front of church to see the renewal of our buildings. And as we're moving now into the second stage of the Heart of Islington project, it is about renewal of our structures. And I'm really grateful to the trustees of Mary's, our partner charity, uh, and the PCC for the way we were able at the end of last year to work out a way forward for the good work of Mary's um, to continue and to support them as they move into focusing on their youth work from this site. But the renewal of buildings and the renewal of structures are never an end in themselves. They are always to serve the growth of the church, to serve the growth of the community of sisters and brothers who gather in this place to serve God. Growth in evangelism. We want to see people discover the life-changing, transforming power of Christ. Growth in discipleship. We want, as we journey together with God, to go deeper each and every day as individuals and as a community in our faith and our own walk with Jesus and growth in our social impact and action. We want to share more and more in our deeds, not just in our words, the love of God with the people of this community. We have been on a journey of renewal and we continue to move through that journey of renewal together as sisters and brothers of Christ called to be in this place at this time. When Judas has asked his question, Lord, why us? Jesus responds in the words of the message version with the phrase, because a loveless world is a sightless world world. Lord, why us? Because a loveless world is a sightless world. As we journey together, as a community focused on Christ's expectance about all that God will do, grappling with our own hopes and fears, our failures and our successes, our doubts and our questions, we learn each and every day more of what it means to know God's love and to share God's love with each other. And because of that walking together, we can share God's love with our wider community. We can be what God is calling us to be, I believe, a beacon of love and hope in this community. The Family Fun Day last year was such a wonderful highlight for me. A thousand people causing joyful chaos in and around the church grounds and in the building itself. A thousand people who that day, as we said to them, we want to bless you with this. You don't pay for anything. A thousand people who perhaps encountered the love of God in a way they had never done before. A beacon of love and hope in the midst of this community. A place where, as Jesus goes on to say in the Gospel of John, God himself comes and makes his home. Wouldn't that be wonderful? That we would be a beacon of love and hope in this community that people, whenever they come through those doors, whenever they hear about St. Mary's, would know some sense that this is a place that we are a people amongst whom God has made God's home. A real encouragement, of course, for us is if that sounds overwhelming and daunting, Jesus then goes on to say, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. 
the advocate, the helper, the comforter, in the great gentle power of the Holy Spirit, we do not do things in our own strength, but in and through the Holy Spirit. I love the heart in this church to, for caring for God's creation, not as an add-on to mission and ministry, but as an integral, fundamental part of who we are. And climate change can seem so overwhelming. And if we think about just what we can do in our own strength, I'm sure some of us may just want to give up right now. But we can't, and we won't, because we are not doing this in our own strength. We are doing this with the power and the help of the Holy Spirit who lives in us and guides us. And so when we're faced with things even like climate change, we can believe that there is hope. We can live out a new way of being as individuals and together as a community. And we can work for change to build God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Those words of Christ that the Holy Spirit is in us and working through us will teach us everything and remind us of all that Jesus has said to us, calls us back to being a people of prayer. And as we look forward and next year in April, some of the work that is currently done by Mary's comes back under our life as a church. The management of the site, the community hub, the preschool come back under our life as a church. Our understanding of what it means to worship God is going to have to grow. Our worship is not just about what we do on a Sunday morning. Our worship is about all about how people are welcomed to our site. Our worship is about how the preschool makes sure that children and young people are cared for. The work and worship that we do is not just limited to a Sunday morning, but becomes about everything that we are as individuals and as a church. It is that call back that all we are and all we have is worship and prayer to God. And we can be bold in that. We can be bold and we can be expectant, not because we do it in our own strength. Lord, why us? But because, as Jesus says, we have a call. A loveless world is a sightless world. A call to take the good news of Christ out in word and in deed, wherever we find ourselves. And because we can have confidence. Confidence that in our own journey, in our journey together here at St. Mary's, we do it not in our own strength, but in the gentle power and grace of the Holy Spirit. Amen.